Nou, welkom uh, iedereen. En nou, hartstikke fijn en leuk dat jullie er zijn. En uh, natuurlijk ook meer willen weten over deze regio. Uh, nou, ik ben de Sharon van, van, van Travelbro. En uh, met mijn collega TJ, die zit hier ook, maar die zien jullie uh, niet. Het is een hand. <laughs> uh, nou, ik geef zo het woord aan, aan, aan Raphaël. Hij is de tijdelijke directeur van het verkeersbureau in Nederland. En uh, hij geeft vervolgens weer het woord aan, aan zijn Nederlandse collega's Ellen en Rosa. En de presentatie is in handen van, 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 van Juan. En uh, nou, mocht je vragen hebben of wat dan ook, stel ze gerust. Dat kan via de Q&A, die staat hieronder. Mijn collega René gaat ze uh, al typend uh, beantwoorden en... Uh, mocht er een vraag zijn die het verkeersbureau direct uh, kan beantwoorden, wordt dat ook gedaan. Dus uh, nou, veel plezier en, uh, en vooral uh, ja, leer ze, zeg maar. Uh, nou, geef nu het woord aan, uh, aan Raphaël. Uh, thank you, Sharon. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, good morning uh, and good end uh, For me, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you to share this time uh, and this morning in this webinar. The first of all and that we are uh, organizing uh, with uh, Travel Pro. For me, it's a real pleasure. And I want to thank uh, also to the Valencia region and Juan Muñoz, especially to be the first in this series of webinars. Uh, I think that we are, we are going to learn a lot about uh, Valencia, about many things that maybe you don't know. And of course, I want to thank all the Travel Alliance for us, it's a privilege to, be, to, to share this time with you because we, we need you. Uh, we need your help in order to, to sell again in Spain because uh, like you know, we have uh, had a terrible time, the pandemic times, but now I think that little by little we are going to, to, to begin again uh, a new era. Uh, I think that uh, we are going to rebuild the tourism, we are going to restart the tourism, and for us it's, it's key to, to, to work with you. Uh, like you know, uh, Spain is open again uh, for the tourists. Uh, after 21st of June, uh, of June the, the borders are opened. I think that we are going to have a seasonal strain this year. It's not, uh, it's, not, it's not going to be the same that other years. But I think that it will be uh, uh, interesting year to, to reinvent the tourism. Um, I think that the, the, the pandemic, uh, the, the, the worst of the pandemic is over. Uh, and I hope that the, the Spain will be open again uh, all of you and you and your clients are going to enjoy a lot of our country. Like you know, uh, Valencia region, La Comunidad Valenciana is always a favorite for the Dutch. I think that is uh, a very interesting region. Uh, you, I know you, all, all of you have been in Valencia, Alicante, and Castellón. And I think that we are going to learn a lot about the, the region, about the interior, about the beaches, about the gastronomy. I think that is a fantastic uh, region. I, 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 I hope that you are, I are going to, to go there this, this summer and I am sure that you are going to, to profit this, this webinar. And finally, I only, want to, I only want to add a few words about uh, we are going to reinvent, uh, restart the tourism again, but we don't want to commit the same mistake than the, than the past. For that reason, I think that sustainability is key. It's key. Sustainability is key for the tourism in Spain. Uh, we don't need uh, everybody go to the same place at the same time, uh, uh, the same day. Uh, I think that we need uh, to, to, to focus on the, the important thing is to establish, um, to, to create a balance between the locals and the tourists. For that reason, sustainability is key. And I think the Valencia region, the Comunidad Valenciana, is perfect for that kind of tourism. And that's all. I, uh, let me now introduce to my colleagues in the Tourism Office of Spain in the Netherlands, Rosa Vicente and uh, Ellen van... Ellen van, Seyl, Ellen van Seyl. Thank you very much at all again, and please, Ellen. Okay, thank you. Hello, allemaal. Yeah, let's switch. Hello, allemaal. My name is Ellen van Seyl, and I'm here samen with my collega Rosa Vicente. Hola, Rosa. Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> Uh, wij zijn al vele jaren het contact uh, van jullie uh, op het Spaans Verkeersbureau voor de tourropers, reters en uh, reisagenten. Uh, ik heet jullie allemaal van harte welkom bij de webinar over de regio Valencia. En natuurlijk willen we ook uh, Travelpro heel hartelijk bedanken om dit samen met ons uh, te organiseren. Dat vinden we natuurlijk ontzettend fijn. Maar natuurlijk ook uh, Juan Muñoz en de regio Valencia willen we heel hartelijk bedanken dat jullie uh, dit met ons uh, willen organiseren. 
En uh, ja, niet te vergeten willen we jullie allemaal natuurlijk heel hartelijk bedanken dat jullie meedoen aan uh, deze webinar. En dat we zo weer contact hebben met elkaar om uh, Spanje te kunnen promoten en om het weer op de kaart te zetten. Nou ja, Spanje zoals jullie weten staat uh, weer helemaal open voor het uh, toerisme deze zomer. Vanaf uh, 21 juni verwelkomen we weer uh, allerlei soorten gasten, bezoekers uh, en, en toeristen die ons land komen bezoeken. We zijn hier natuurlijk heel, 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 heel erg blij mee dat het deze zomer toch nog gaat lukken. Dat, dat we kunnen reizen en dat de grenzen open zijn. Uh, in ons land zijn alle maatregelen genomen voor de bezoekers om het zo veilig mogelijk te kunnen laten verlopen. Uh, de toeristensector heeft hier enorm hard aan gewerkt, zodat jullie allemaal veilig zeg maar, het, het land kunnen bezoeken. We gaan er echt het beste van maken na deze vreselijke ervaring van die COVID-19. Wat toch wel uh, ja, een hele harde dreun in, in het toerisme heeft gegeven. Het, het uh, natuurlijk zitten we te wachten op toerisme. En hiervoor is Valencia uitgesproken de, de, de beste regio, zeg maar. Met hun fantastische landschap, stranden, steden, cultuur en niet te vergeten gastronomie. Dus daarom ga ik nu het woord geven aan Juan Muñoz. Hij gaat jullie een hele mooie presentatie over de regio Valencia laten zien. En na afloop mogen jullie hem dan nog wat vragen stellen. Die kunnen jullie ook al naar René sturen. En dan gaan we die proberen samen met Juan voor jullie te beantwoorden. Dan wens ik jullie nu heel veel plezier toe met het kijken naar de presentatie van Juan. En dan geef ik Juan nu het woord. Adelante Juan. Eh, bueno, muchas gracias. Eh, espero que se, se, se escucha bien. Sí, ¿no? Sí. Perfecto. Eh, muchas gracias, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, viele, um, dank u wel. Uh, un goede morgen. Welkom alle. Uh, well, I don't speak Dutch, so I will do my presentation in, 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 in English. I think you'll understand. Um, to start with, I'm the head of promotion of the Valencia region. Uh, and all, uh, I, I will try to make an, an introduction to the uh, presentation, an introduction to all, all some of the some of the things that the region has to offer to all of you. Uh, I have a presentation I will share with you yes. during uh, during my uh, during my uh, speech. Yeah, and um, right. So I think I can, you can see it now exactly. Uh, I will just give you some data about the region, and so. Uh, to start with, maybe you some some of the things you already know because uh, uh, you Dutch uh, are the four the fourth largest uh, group of tourists, the fourth largest uh, country uh, that uh, comes to our to our region after uh, people coming from the United Kingdom, France, Germany, come the Netherlands. Sixteen, I think you are more or less sixteen to seventeen million people, but you come a lot to our region. Uh, and I think people, normally Dutch people, really enjoy our region. They enjoy Costa Blanca, they enjoy Alicante, they enjoy Benidorm, but they also enjoy Valencia or Castellón even. So uh, this is great news, and I hope that you are all back in, in, in only a few days. So I will give you some of the, some reasons to come back to the region, probably. Um, yeah, so uh, and that's it. Um, first of all, who and, and where are we? So we are one of 17 autonomous regions in Spain. We are located on Spain uh, eastern coast. That means that uh, you can go to the previous one. Which, no, sorry, this is the previous one. Yeah. So we are located right. We are located right in the middle point of the Mediterranean Sea. That's very important to remember because it's, it gives us the our our character. It gives us the character of a Mediterranean region, a very uh, truly Mediterranean region, and that's that's what we. What we want to sell, and that's I think the impression that you get when you go to uh, when you go to Holland, you get the, the impression that you are by the North Sea. Then you get you have to get the impression that we are by the Mediterranean. That that marks really uh, our lifestyle and our character. I think uh, we have uh, 20, uh, a bit more than 23 square uh, square kilometers, uh, 23,000 sorry square kilometers, 5.2 uh, uh, million inhabitants, uh, an average temperature of 17 degrees and an average of 300 sunny days per year. Mm, I must say that we have a very rainy, uh, rainy confinement, a, a very rainy lockdown, the rainiest ever, but now sunshine is back again. Right now we, are, we, we have more or less like uh, 28 to 29 degrees where I'm, stand, where I'm staying, 
near near Valencia, near the city of Valencia. So, and if I would send you, I will share with you uh, an image that a colleague of mine has just sent me from the uh, from the beach in Altea. I think you'll understand why it it, it, it pays to come here, it pays to to to, to come back here. Um, well, um, now we have three provinces. We have sorry, we have. Uh, we have uh, 500 kilometers coastline, so that means that you have a very widespread coastline that goes from southern Catalonia to the region of Murcia and almost to Andalusia in the south. We have three provinces, Castellón in the north, which is the uh, less inhabited one, Valencia in the center, which hosts the uh, capital city of the region, Valencia, uh, with uh, almost one million people, and Alicante in the south, uh, which is the most tourist uh, uh, part of the of the region, I should say. Um, right. Um, so just to give you a glimpse about economic data in the, in the region, all in all, we mean about 10% of the Spanish GDP. We are Spain's fourth largest region per GDP. Uh, and Valencia, for example, has the fourth commercial largest port in Europe. Uh, first is yours, is, is Rotterdam, I know. But we come fourth in, in Europe and, and second in the Mediterranean. So it's a very large port. And we have the main economic sectors such as uh, a strong industry for automobile, ceramic tiles, food, furniture, toy shoes, but also tourism is very important as we will see. We are very much export oriented and tourist economy. Uh, export represents 60% of the total output. I think that we share that with you uh, Dutch, that you are also a very um, export oriented country and service oriented country. Um, just going into some tourist uh, uh, tourist, um, sorry, about some data about tourism. Uh, we have, last year we have 30 million visitors. Uh, we have 23 million passengers in three international airports. That means that we have, uh, we have three international airports. A big one, which is Alicante Elche, Spain's fifth largest. Valencia, which is Spain's ninth largest airport. Uh, you have there, it's 8.5 million last year. Alicante Elche was 14.5 million and Castellón, which is the smallest uh, uh, regional government-owned airport north of the region that's starting to develop right now. Tourism means around 14% of the regional GDP and 14.5% 14, 14 of total employment. And there are around four, uh, 400,000 hotel beds in the whole region, and a, a countless amount of uh, apartments and so. Um, so that's why it's so important that we recover uh, tourism. Uh-huh, so, sorry, oh, oh, here we are. Hmm? I don't know what's happening. Uh, can, uh, exactly, sorry. Uh-huh. Uh, there we are. There we are once again. Uh, yeah, so to give you some data about tourism, as I said to you before, I said to you before, um, uh, mainly bound markets to the Valencia region. We had last year we had like 30 million visitors, as I said before. Among among them, 9.5. That's that's uh, the data shown here are from night uh, to, uh, to uh, 2018, and the data from 2019 is 9.5 million foreign visitors. Uh, of these, uh, 6.4 come from the Netherlands. That means that last year was a bit more than 400,000. Dutch people came to the region, so it's an important amount. We have also a big amount of uh, Dutch residents, south in the, especially in the southern area of the region, in the province of Alicante. Mm -hmm. um, this about uh, airports I, I already told to you, so I think we can we can go to uh, the next one. Uh, I would like to show you some of the offer for, uh, 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 of destinations based on three um, on four large products. First would be sun and beach tourism, what we call vacational tourism, urban, cultural and nice, rural Mediterranean, what we call rural Mediterranean, which is the interior of the, of the region, and health, well-being and sport tourism. Just to give you a glimpse of an overall view of, uh, of uh, some of the products that the, uh, that the region has to offer. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So uh, to start with Sun and Beach, we have, as I said before, more than 100, 100, uh, 400, sorry, 450 kilometers of beaches. That is quite a lot. Most of them are 
uh, are open beaches, long uh, sandy beaches, but you also have like a small coast and a small uh, small uh, uh, pebble beaches and so. But they, as you may know, almost all of them you can see here. For example, the, the beach, a beach in Castellón. The center is the, the, the image in the center is Peñíscola, a wonderful uh, a wonderful place in uh, in northern Castellón, almost near the uh, border with Catalonia. And this is the area around around Denia, for example. So you have here most of the main destinations of Benidorm, that everybody knows, I think, in Europe, uh, Peniscola, Gandia, Denia, Altea, or Torrevieja. It's mostly families in summer and senior and in autumn and spring as the main segments uh, coming to the region as regards sun and beach tourism. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, so um, this is to talk about. Uh, Go. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the previous one. Um, I think once again. Oh, so sorry to the previous one. Can I manage to go to the previous one? Uh, even a uh, previous one. No, not all from the <laughs> So oh, I think we have to recover some of the. Uh, sorry. Can we go to? Uh, one, that's it. I just wanted to insist, I mean, we are known by uh, sun and beach tourism, but I would like to insist on a point that I think is important, and you have, and um, many Dutch people have discovered in these last years, and that is that we have one of the most uh, exciting uh, live, uh, sorry, city cityscapes uh, in, in, in Spain, and I would say in Southern Europe. Um, on one side, we have very interesting cities to visit. One would be Valencia and also Alicante, and also small cities dotted around the region, for example, like uh, I would say Morella, north of the region, uh, Morella, Xativa, Bucairent, and other places. It's also important to remember that they are, we are the second, um, the second most mountainous region in Spain. That means that after Asturias in northern Spain. That means that, that a good contrast, something that you've got, and we, I'll, I'll talk about it later, is that you have the sea along uh, sandy uh, coast uh, with 150 kilometers of beaches, and also very nearby, almost 20 kilometers, for example, just 20, 25 kilometers away from Benidorm, you've got the Aitana Mountain, Aitana Sierra. So this, is the, this means that you can go from uh, the sea level to uh, almost 1,600 meters, uh, 1, meters high in just 25 minutes. That makes a big difference. That means that we have a lot of different climates, a lot of different uh, atmospheres, and that you can you can be at the beach and be in the mountains just one hour away or 25 minutes away. So that gives a lot of contrast. And also, uh, you have to think that we host we 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 have the Spain's third largest city after Madrid and Barcelona, which is Valencia, that many of you may know, and which is um, as you but know, it's a very flat city, which can be easily uh, easily uh, walked or cycled. And it's uh, and I think it's a, it's a very nice destination for your for your customers as well. Uh, we also, as uh, as the slide says, we offer some of the best known festivals in Spain, such as the Tomato Battle, the Tomatina, that takes place in in the town of Buñol, uh, near Valencia, 25 kilometers away from Valencia, every uh, every last uh, Wednesday in August. This year will not take place because of the COVID-19. Most of the festivals have been uh, basically delayed. Or postponed till, uh, till next year. Um, but instead, uh, many things are also going on, small things, smaller, smaller festivals and so, but the big festivals are um, have been uh, delayed. Um, also, uh, let's go, let's go for a moment to the previous one. Uh -huh. to the... Yeah, I just wanted to say that we have 10 UNESCO World Heritage and 116 museums and exhibitions. We have very known very well known uh, UNESCO World Heritage in the region. Uh, another thing is important in the region is MICE. We have 15 congress centers in Auditoria, and the city of Valencia is among the five top destinations for MICE tourism in Spain, with seven big venues for congress and events. The good things about MICE is that you can combine old, uh, old buildings and traditional buildings with new ones, with the most avant-gardistic ones. So this is, I think this is an important thing as well. Um, Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next one. 
clear. For example, you can see here one of the, uh, this image belongs to the Lonja or Silk Exchange building in Valencia, which is one of the 10 UNESCO World Heritage Sites and festivals as well. Uh, we have one of the largest UNESCO World Heritage uh, declared goods in the whole of Spain, um, which is quite a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, no, oh yeah, right. For example, you can see you can see here the image of a large uh, dancing festival that takes place at the beginning of June, every June, in in the city of Valencia, in the main square, one of the main squares in the Plaza de la Virgen, one of the main squares in Valencia. As I said before, for example, also you have Las Fallas, you have the Tuantina, you have the Moros y Cristianos, the Muslim Christian festivals, and many others all around the region that also welcome foreigners. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, and this is, for example, this is the combination. And the good thing that the region has to offer is this awesome traditional, uh, this combination of traditional and modern venues uh, with old, old, old traditional ones. This is, for example, the city of Arts and Sciences, which you, um, many of you would probably know. For example, this is a complex in the city of Valencia that offers an opera hall, a planetarium, a science museum, Europe's largest aquarium, and, uh, and some other some other buildings. So it's a fantastic community. It's a fantastic combination for leisure, uh, for uh, families, and also for individual visitors as well, and for groups. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't know what happens with the yeah. So cruises, uh, we have also uh, around 250 cruises per year. Uh, it, it is, and I hope it will be in the future, also a big, uh, a big thing in, in the region. It was growing before the pandemic is start, uh, started. And uh, so there were 500,000 uh, cruise passengers every year to the Valencia region. Um, still, we are far away from Barcelona and Palma de Mallorca. And there, was, um, there is a gap for development in this, in this, in this sector. But it was evolving quite well, as I said before the pandemics. So let's hope it will evolve quite well after the pandemics as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now I would like to go to active tourism. I know that normally you Dutch, you are seeking normally for places where you can go to the mountains. Because of the many things that you have in your country, Mountains is something that you don't have. I think I was I was told once that one I was uh, uh, for traveling around Holland that the highest mountain you've got is is about like 192 meters is, is 192 meters high or something. Uh, well, there's something that we've got plenty of uh, as I said before plenty of mountains and the combination of being near the city and, and near near the sea and that you can go into the mountains into a, a 2,000 at uh, 2,000 meters which are high mountains, just in, in 25 minutes, in one hour, at its at, at, at the, at the, uh, at this widest, uh, I think is a, is a great thing. So um, the good thing is that you have 21 uh, nature parks, uh, 22 right now at the moment. Uh, you have, for example, 11 climbing zones, one of them amongst, amongst the best uh, acknowledged uh, climbing zones in, 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 in Europe or in, in Spain, like, for example, Julia near near Valencia, 25 kilometers away from the city of Valencia. You have MTB, uh, M, M, uh, mountain bike uh, centers or hiking trails. That gives you a lot of opportunities for your, uh, for your, to your customers for a combination between doing something in the city, by the sea, or in the mountains, doing some, some sports. This is also something that's, um, that's helping us a lot in this uh, post-pandemic period, because it offers a lot of possibilities for developing uh, tourism in in safe in safe places where you are not surrounded by a lot of people, yeah, which is uh, also good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, another important thing. Oh, let's go back to the previous one. Sorry about it. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know what happens here. 
Uh, let's go to the previous one, sorry about, about it. Okay, right, so another thing, apart from active uh, tourism, that gives you a lot of possibilities for bird watching, as I said before, cycling, hiking, or, or other sports, climbing, and other sports in the mountains, uh, there is the possibility of, I don't know why, this seems to be, where is, I want to go to the previous one. Oh, uh, can I, may, may I go to the previous one? Because it's, I don't know what's happening. I tried to go, no, to the previous one, to the one before, two before this one. Mm -hmm. uh, two before, not this one, the one before. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, it's also uh, another, another of the strong selling points of the region is, uh, is the, uh, the possibility of host different sports events. Uh, we had, uh, previously to the pandemics, and let's hope that after the pandemics, we will have, uh, for example, one of Europe's largest marathons, which is the Valencia City Marathon, uh, which uh, where there were scheduled to be this year almost uh, 30,000 participants. Last year, at least 1,000 came uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, we have also the possibility of going to the Spanish GP for um, moto, for uh, uh, for uh, uh, moto moto GP, and that takes place in November. Uh, we have hosted also a lot of golf uh, uh, golf championships. We have 34 golf courses, most of them located south of the region in the area surrounding Alicante, and so 51 diving centers that you can so you can imagine how can you practice all these kind of uh, all, 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 all nautical sports and so. And uh, these are some of the possibilities for sports, also for health and well-being. We have some of the largest uh, well-being spas and, and areas in Spain. For example, the uh, uh, the Shah um, the Shah Spa and, and Hotel near Benidorm is one of the largest in 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 Spain for health and beauty treatments. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to give you an overview of what the, what the region has to offer. Um, the idea would be that you. Uh, can offer to your, uh, very, very different products to your customers. Because it's, uh, uh, you can combine city, you can combine beach, you can combine city with beach, and also, for example, uh, something in the interior. That, that, that I think, is, for, for me, the best selling point in the region. This kind of combinations at, uh, at affordable prices, and there are products for almost everybody, everybody there. Um, let's go to the next one. Mm -hmm. And yeah, to go to the previous one, 45. Yeah, so, uh, and another big selling point of the region would be uh, the birth, it's the birthplace of the paella, and it's the Mediterranean cuisine. The Spanish cuisine is the Mediterranean cuisine. You know that Spanish cuisine, I think, is um, one of the big selling points in the, in the country, together with our wines and so. And in Valencia, it has a very, it's, it has a face of its own. Uh, we are the birthplace of the paella. In fact, paella comes from a Valencian word. We have two languages in the region. One is Spanish, the other is Valencian. Valencia is quite similar to Catalan, or it's quite, it's quite uh, akin to, to Catalan. And paella means, uh, means uh, frying pan. So, uh, paella in French. So it means it's, um, it has to, it has to, it, it is a, it is, it's a rice made in a, in a frying pan. Yeah. So this is the birthplace of the paella. And we uh, normally boast a boastful to say that have uh, a different rice recipe for every day in the year. I wouldn't say so much, but at least I know of more than 100 rice recipes. Rice is a, uh, is a strong point in our, in our cuisine, in our gastronomy. We have also uh, other possibilities like the Spanish tapas. In, in the region, most of, most of the tapas are uh, fish or uh, seafood-based tapas. Um, we have also um, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, dish for vegetarians that's also important to know because, because we use a lot of a lot of vegetables a lot of vegetables and, and fruits are used in in, in, in in cooking in the Valencia region um, all in all in the region we have to have 22 Michelin star restaurants uh, the amount of Michelin star restaurants has increased uh, uh, hugely in these last years in the region and we have three large wine producing areas producing uh, white and red wine 
Um, maybe we are not one of the best known uh, wine producing areas in Spain, but we have some of the largest production of wines in Spain. After places like Rioja or Rivera del Duero, we have Utiel Requena, we have uh, also Alicante area, and we have the Valencia area with uh, very good red wines in the interior and white wines, white fruity wines uh, near the coast. Um, so I would invite you to, to do some wine tasting and so forth for your customers to do some wine tasting. Uh, so this just gives you, as I said before, a glimpse, a hint of what we have to offer. Now, the thing is, uh, after the pandemics, we cannot, we, we cannot ignore the situation we are in, obviously. Uh, it has hit uh, Spain very, as, as Rafael said before, it has hit Spain very hardly and uh, it has hit our region very hardly. Our region was not one of the hardest hits um, in, in Spain, but, uh, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm aware that any region, for example, as is happening in, in Portugal right now, could be uh, another starting point, another focus or something. Uh, what have we done to prevent this? What do you, your customers have to know, the most important rules in Spain that you have to know, or at least in the region, that you have to know, you have to know in order to, uh, uh, in order to know, in order to uh, be advised, so as to have to, how to act uh, within the region. That's why I decided to include two other slides, two final slides in the presentation, uh, just to give you an idea how, how, how things are being managed right now in Spain. Basically, what happens is that uh, just to give you an idea how the measures were taken, what, which measures have been taken, I must say that the State Secretary for Tourism in coordination with the Ministry of Health has developed guides with specifications to reduce the spread of the coronavirus. Uh, they contain specifications for service, cleaning, disinfection, maintenance, and risk management for different tourism and subsectors. So basically what happens in Spain is there is, a, um, there is an institute for uh, tourist quality the, called ICTE, Instituto Español para la Calidad Turística, uh, Spanish Institute for Tourist Quality, that have given some recommendations have made some rules. Um, they cannot be reinforced as they don't, they cannot, they haven't, they haven't got the force to, uh, to put that in vigor, to put that, to, to, uh, to, um, uh, or to oblige people to follow them. But they have said, they have um, somehow, uh, they, these recommendations are being followed in general by everybody in Spain. So basically, for example, uh, uh, we have, as the uh, regional government, we have participated drafting the guides, uh, and we have we have done several different guides for active tourism and ecotourism, campsites, golf courses, hostel, hotels, restaurant, rural accommodations, past tour guides, tourist information offices, travel agencies, and last but not least, beaches. Um, so, what happens in Spain? I, I must say that if you uh, if you have seen images of Spain lately. Um, people is quite aware of the, and we have we have had a, a very tough time in Spain. I think people is aware of the of the problems. So I think everything. It seems to me, and I think in general can be said. I think Rafael can, can say the same uh, that Sp the Spanish population is being very civic about it, and several several rules, several general rules are mandatory are are being followed by almost everybody. Um, the first is that hygienic masks, face masks, are mandatory in general. If you cannot keep, uh, in all places, if you, if you cannot keep a distance of 1.5 uh, meters among, uh, among, among each other. Um, in general, the rule is that in open spaces, um, in open spaces, uh, face masks are not very much used, but they are so in closed rooms or closed spaces for example in supermarkets in 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 commercial in shopping centers in 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 shops in general they are used people always wear or, or people always have uh, um, face mask at, at hand and put it and cover their faces whenever they are near somebody or they go into a closed space and in some places like supermarkets many shops and so they're completely compulsory but now with what we call new normality, they are being used almost everywhere. You have to know this, it's important, but it's, uh, it's very much enforced in all around Spain. They are not so, so much used with some exceptions or some people that use it in beaches or in open spaces in the countryside, obviously, or in open spaces in, in cities. 
um, the, safe, uh, the, the safety distance is set at 1.5 meters in general. Uh, we, uh, you know that we, Spani we, we Spaniards, we like, uh, we like uh, hugging each other, we like uh, greeting effusively, and so, but now uh, avoiding greeting staff members and other customers with physical contact, including shaking hands, are to be respected whenever possible, and they are respected. We are doing a great effort in this, in not hugging uh, small children or even in not hugging friends or just even uh, give a, uh, a warm greeting to, to friends when we see each other. Uh, also, as I think everywhere, wash, what the, the washing of hands, surely before and each after activity, normally uh, disinfectant solutions are available at the entrance of every hotel, every even every room, every, uh, every shop, and every place in Spain. Uh, sharing devices with other people, it's not advised, so that many menus in uh, Uncocked in restaurants are now uh, operated by QR, QR, uh, by QR solutions and so. And also, obviously, as everybody has been told, avoiding touching eyes, nose, and mouth, and things like that. Um, I must say that um, um, these measures are being enforced everywhere. There are there are fines if you don't respect them, and but normally Spaniards are respecting them. Obviously, I mean. Uh, if, you, if you if you for example if you go to the beach you also have to know that uh, although there are some rules like keeping safe distance at 1.5 meters and so in some places beaches uh, the best thing to do when you go into a beach is um, consulting the website of each uh, of each um, um, local town local council in in you you are going to because um, the uh, how measures are being enforced may vary slightly from one place to another. They are quite common everywhere, so you have to keep to keep a distance. And so, um, beaches are open and closed as uh, like at, normally at like at nine till one, and then closed again. They are cleaned, and then you follow in the afternoon. But there are some there are some changes from one place to another. So you have to. The best thing or the best thing you can do is just try to consult. I say I say beaches because it's quite. It's quite normal, and the best thing you can do is consult which is the uh, which is uh, which which measures are being enforced in each uh, local town because they are they have the competence for that. Although some general recommendations are applied in the whole country and in the whole region. Um, so um, I hope this gives you a small insight on on the region. I would like to talk more and and letting you know more things and I wish I had more time to do it but I think this is a glimpse I'm available for you um, uh, the people in the organization have my um, my email address and so uh, so uh, uh, questions apart from now questions or doubts that you may have are also welcome and I would try to uh, answer them thank you thank you uh, Juan, uh, for, for this uh, uh, webinar um... We will unmute uh, Ellen for the, for the questions. <laughs> en dankjewel iedereen natuurlijk ook uh, voor, voor het bijwonen van deze webinar. Uh, uh, hij is ook uh, uh, live gedeeld op Facebook. Dus misschien uh, dan, en, en, en we plaatsen hem sowieso nog eventjes op onze site en op Facebook. Dus mocht je iets hebben gemist of wat dan ook, dan uh, kan je hem nog eventjes uh, teruglezen. Of uh, horen natuurlijk en kijken. Uh, Ellen, heb jij nog uh, vragen? Uh, well, I see there is a question uh, on site from uh, Cindy Kruse. And she asks, do you need to make reservation in advance to bars, restaurants, musea and swimming pools? Right. I mean, the, the, the general rule is that you, you don't have to. I mean, it's not compulsory, but it's quite advisable. Now, restaurants and in general, uh, shops and everything in Spain are, have a, um, an, an overall amount of 75% of the total people that in a place can be. So, uh, um, so since the, uh, what we call the aforo, what we call the possibility of people inside is somewhat reduced. It's not very much reduced because 75% is not a big amount. And in open spaces, in open terraces, terraces and so it's now 100%, you better do it. 
because um, also some of the places are still closed. A very few places, almost, I would say that 90% of the places are now open in Spain, but obviously some have suffered. Uh, the amount maybe is slight, slightly smaller. But I think in general, you better, you better uh, make reservation, although it's not compulsory, it's the same. Okay. And another question was if uh, they have to use mouth cups, uh, for example, in buses, metro, or in a distance, with yeah. Or, yeah, in a supermarket. Face, face mask are, are compulsory in public transportation. Yeah. And if you go with your own car, and it's they are not compulsory as far as you are sharing your car with people you are living with. But in okay. general, people is not using so much in private cars. But in public in public transportation. Yes, they are compulsory. Okay. So far, because there but, is but you can travel, for moment, example. Yeah. This is the rule at this moment. Right now, this is the rule. Yeah. Okay. But with four friends, you have to use mouth caps. And if you are from one family, you don't have to use the mouth caps. Yeah, that's the general rule. I mean, it's, uh, okay. uh, but, but that's, that's the rule. Yeah. If, if, if people you are living with, you, you shouldn't wear masks. If you are in a car, if, you, if with friends you are not living with, uh, you better have face masks at hand. Okay. Yeah. Another question was also if they accept cash money, if you can pay with cash money. Yeah, you can pay with cash money. Once again, cards, paying with cards or with uh, contact lens or with the uh, mobile phone or something is visible and it's being more, uh, it's being more widespread. In fact, I heard that uh, during the uh, lockdown, uh, car, car payments uh, increased by uh, 100% in, in, in Spain. But you can also pay with cash. We will take it, that's for sure. Okay. Uh, can you walk uh, inside the terrace if you want, or do you have to make a reservation, or, or do you have to wait for the waiter, or can you just walk inside and sit down on the table? I think it's better if you wait outside and then you are let in. But uh, you, cannot, you, can also, you can also let in. The, the, the thing is, you have to remember that it's uh, maximum amount of people, uh, maximum of 70% of the total amount that would be allowed in normal conditions. So uh, normally at, a, at certain hours, like for example, at dinner time, at lunch time, and so you may have problems. So you better wait and ask. Yeah, because there's some, but it's, uh, it's um, at the beginning, at the beginning of the year, when the lockdown ended, that was far more strict. But now it's more open. The only thing that you have to remember is only 70% of the total, of the total amount of the people that were allowed is now allowed to go into, into, for example, restaurants or so. So uh, it's a big amount, but it still is smaller than it was. So that's the thing. Mm -hmm. So you better wait until you have been, you have been asked to, to, to be let in. And if you see that the people is scattered around and so, you can go in and there will be no problem. Okay. And another question was for the Musea. If you have uh -huh. to make a reservation or you can buy the tickets also on the door? You can make both. Once again, uh, once again, and normally in practically all museum, all museum, you can you can buy them there uh, on the spot. But in some places, you are asked in the smaller museums, and so you will be probably asked to do it on the internet, and so or, or even in, in bigger ones. For example, I'm thinking of El Prado, or I'm thinking in some places, for example, in the Valencia region, in the city of arts and sciences. So once again, you better make a reservation. You better buy it before online. You will probably have some discounts as well. In, in some in, in some in some cases, but uh, you can normally in a in in a large amount uh, buy them on the spot, buy the tickets on the spot. Yeah. Okay. Now I don't have further questions received, so I think everything is clean and clear. Yeah. So now, yeah, let's go to Spain. I think <laughs> it's, everything is very clear. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was very very nice and very clear. Thank you yeah. very much. Okay, if you uh, there's uh, something else that you need to know or something or any information that the participants would like to would like to know, I mean, I'm available for uh, or we are available at the uh, at tourism uh, of the Valencia region to answer all your all of your questions or everything you may need. Yes, the same yeah. for us. Eh? If we can help you, you can send us an email, and we can also ask always Juan if we want to know something particular about Valencia. And also for other questions, the Spanish Tourist Board is open to receive all your questions. So 
you yeah. can send us a lot of emails and we will find out how it works, how it's going, uh, everything, everything. Yeah, Thank I you think, very I, much. <laughs> I think the idea is that things, things in general are going fine here. If you come here, I mean, this, this, the, the situation is quite normal. I mean, I wouldn't say that you expect to find something that's not normal. So you only have to remember some of the ideas. Yes, this keeping social distance at 1.5, using uh, face masks and so in public places or in closed space. Um, and keeping some some rules that I think are kept everywhere in Europe and everywhere the, around the world right now. But yes. apart from that, the situation is, I think, if, the, if customers come here, I don't know if it's the idea that you have been transmitted in the Netherlands, but it's, it's quite of, uh, that of normalcy. That yes. Things are running quite, quite good. We have a very yes. tough time. It's really, we have one of the strictest lockdowns for two months and a half. It's been tough, it's been, it's been rough, but it, now it's normal and it's working well. We don't have so many contagions right now. It's uh, reduced to, uh, to single digits many of the days. So, uh, so I think that I will, I will say to the uh, to your customers, please uh, come down and we'll enjoy, you will enjoy the weather, you'll enjoy the beaches, you'll enjoy the cities and, and the food as well. Like this thing. Okay. Thank you very well. much. Uh, uh, and Ellen, natuurlijk ook for your uh, uh, presentation. Uh, Ellen, zou you misschien nog even het web uh, of your uh, mailadres willen noemen, zodat so mensen als ze als ze vragen hebben even kunnen mailen. Ja, dat is Info La Haya. You, uh, jullie kunnen dat gewoon op onze website zien van het Spaans Verkeersbureau. En dan, kunnen jullie, uh, dan krijgen jullie antwoord. Want we hebben daar een persoon zitten die weet precies met welke persoon die van kantoor contact op moet nemen. Dus uh, op nou, Info helemaal, La Haya. Helemaal super. Komt het goed? Nou, dankjewel jullie. En ook natuurlijk iedereen uh, uh, ja, die uh, hebben meegedaan aan deze webinar. Nou, nogmaals, de webinar wordt gedeeld uh, op onze site en op, uh, op Facebook. Dus dan je kan nog even in alle gerustheid uh, uh, even nakijken of uh, nog een keertje uh, wat uh, informatie uh, uithalen. Nou, dankjewel. En uh, nou, we hopen natuurlijk dat er veel mensen lekker naar uh, Valencia afreizen natuurlijk. Dat hopen wij ook. Okay. En uh, naar heel Spanje natuurlijk. Yeah. Muchas gracias Juan hè? en uh, gracias, gracias uh, Sharon. Ja, dank je. Dank je alle. Dank u wel, Dank je wel. Tot ziens. Tot ziens. Tot ziens. Ja,